Welcome to the Manic Metallic Podcast, where we respect fashion's past, analyze fashion's present, and get excited about fashion's future. I'm Liberty Gate, founder and creative principal of fashion media company Manic Metallic. Several times per week, I'll bring you episodes about exciting things happening in fashion, discussion about current issues facing the industry, and the places and people that have made the fashion industry great. Be sure to subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on Instagram at the Manic Metallic Podcast and at Manic Metallic, both linked in our show notes. Now, let's get into today's episode. Welcome to the Manic Metallic Podcast. I'm Liberty, your host. We're going to talk today about the Cody Awards. The Cody Awards, short for the Cody American Fashion Critics Awards, were created in 1942 by Cody a cosmetics and fragrance company that is still very much alive today, ranking on a Fortune 500. The aim that Cody had with the awards was to enhance the image of American designers and to give them a higher level of status and international recognition. Back when the Cody Awards were created, the United States had entered World War II the year before, in 1941. The awards show was also seen as a way to harness patriotism to gain support behind American fashion. Eleanor Lambert was brought on board to help to oversee and lend publicity to the Cody Awards. The way that the awards nomination process worked was this. The fashion press would nominate designers from the sectors of women's wear and men's wear. Votes were then cast by fashion editors from across the country. The awards, known by some people as fashion's Oscars, were very popular awards because shows were these large, fancily dressed affairs. These were the awards that were given out. Women's Wear Awards were called Winnies, W-I-N-N-I-E-S. Men's Wear Awards didn't have a name. There was a special award that was given to you if you were in a special field such as millinery. There was a return award where if you won, let's say, a Women's Wear Award the year before and then you won it again next year, you would get a return award instead. And then, of course, there was a Hall of Fame award because in fashion... Of course, there's going to be a Hall of Fame. The first Winnie Award winner was designer Norman Norell in 1943, and the last Winnie winner was designer Adrian Vittadini in 1984. In their over 40-year run, these were some of the big names that took home multiple awards broken down by decade. In the 1940s, designers like Hattie Carnegie and Claire McCardell ruled a roost. In the 1950s, designers like James Galano's Pauline Trujer and Norman Norell. 1960s designers like Bill Blass, Oscar de la Renta, and Rudy Gernridge were big winners. The 1970s, of course, he had Halston and Stephen Burroughs and Ralph Lauren as well. And in the 1980s, the twilight of the Cody Awards, he had designers like Perry Ellis, Norma Kamali, and Donna Karen for her work with Anne Klein winning multiple awards. The Cody Awards began to run into a snag in fashion industry relations in 1979 when Cody the company came out with a cosmetics line titled the Cody Awards Collection. This led designers to look upon the company with disdain because of what they saw as over-commercialization. Some designers, like Halston and Calvin Klein, saw it as competition for their own lines, so they refused to accept their awards that year. After that, it was pretty much a slow death for the Cody Awards. The arrival in 1980 of the CFDA Awards, the CFDA itself had been founded in 1962 by publicist Eleanor Lambert. So the arrival of the CFDA Awards in 1980 hastened the Cody Awards' demise. The advantage that the CFDA, also known as the Council of Fashion Designers of America, had was that they didn't have a commercial affiliation or a sponsorship like Cody did. You know, Cody was a company, the CFDA was founded as a nonprofit. It also recognized the contributions of more than just designers. By it, I mean the CFDA. It gave awards to publications and advertisers as well as photographers and retailers. So it's, yeah, it's not just designers getting awards year after year. And I think that that might have helped the CFDA to vary up how many designers were getting awards on a year-to-year basis, and that helped to make it that slightly more selective process. Now, something else to point out is that if you look at 
the list of designers that received Cody Awards over the years, which we're going to leave a link of that list in the show notes for you to take a look at. It seemed like everybody back then was getting an award. And if everyone is awarded, if everyone receives an award, then nothing is special. The CFDA, like I mentioned before, they were a lot more selective with whom they provided awards, unlike Cody towards the end of its fashion awards reign, which... Again, it just seemed like everyone was getting some kind of award. And I mean, I think that designers honestly started to take it for granted because of that. Now, that reign finally came to an end in 1984, that awards show reign, as the last awards were presented. And the Cody Awards were officially ended by Donald Flannery, who was the chair of the Cody Awards board in 1985 after stating that the awards had achieved their purpose. It seems to me then that there was a mixture of, one, Cody's bid to make money off of the Cody Awards in 1979 by producing this cosmetics product by which designers felt threatened. Two, the arrival of the CFDA Awards in 1980. And three, the Cody Awards chair's statement that the awards achieved their goals of elevating American fashion to an international stage. So the Chicago Tribune weighed in with its own theory in June of 1985. And here's a quote from an article of theirs. Quote, In truth, however, the Cody's began to lose their luster in 1979 when the company brought out a new line of cosmetics, the Cody Awards Collection. There was a mighty brouhaha with designers claiming that the Cody Awards had become tainted with commercialism. Calvin Klein and Halston both declined their awards that year. It was only coincidental, of course, that by 1979, most designers had their own fragrances and some had their own cosmetics lines as well. Why should they indirectly put their blessings on a line of cosmetics by accepting an award named after a cosmetics company when they had their very own names on all kinds of bottles, jars, and tubes, end quote. The truth about the demise of the Cody Awards and the reasons for it, of course, is likely somewhere in the middle. Thanks for listening. This was a shorter episode, but we wanted to get the story of the Cody Awards out to you guys. And, you know, sometimes we're not going to have to go a full 15 to 20 minutes. And this was one of those episodes. Now, our next episode is going to feature a discussion on our newest article, which is exciting and tech-focused. Can you guess what it is? See you soon. Thanks for listening. If you got value out of today's episode, it'd mean a lot to me if you rate, review, and subscribe to the Manic Metallic Podcast. Be sure to tell all of your fashion-inclined friends and co-workers about the podcast as well. This would really help us to spread our message about fashion being an art, discipline, and force for societal change. And don't forget to stay in touch with us by subscribing to the Manic Metallic newsletter and following us on Instagram. Feel free to reach out to us through either of those means. I'd love to hear from you. I'll link these all in the show notes. You're the best. See you next episode.